Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we're gonna talk about Cuban chain. It is a never dying style in the jewelry industry. If you are a beginner, this is the video for you and the must learn video for jewelry care design. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this video, I would like to show you how to make this link. I do actually have a video um, that I make Cuban link, which is a movable link. And this is actually need to be you know joined together or soldered together. Uh, that way you can cast properly. But I do like to show you how to make the center is bigger, the size is smaller and flow it to the ring shank. That's starting from a scratch. All right, so that's starting uh, making a circle and snapping into the zero and you can make it in any size for my demonstration. I'm making 16 millimeter and with that size, we need to know like how long uh, is this or the circumference is. So we are going to use the length command and it tells us it is 50.265 millimeter. So I'm going to draw a straight line and exactly that length and this is the line represent the circle if it is being flattened so we're going to do the design right there now i need to have some guideline in this line i do want it to have the bottom of a ring shank is about half of a ring shank so i'm going to use the command for divide and with this command, I'm going to pick up this curve and divide them into four sections. So you're going to see those dot there. The five dot is separated this line into four sections. And the area we are going to work is in between, uh, it's a two section in the middle. So I'm going to simply just draw a box right here to remind me um, where, where I am is. So I'm going to draw roughly a box like that. All right, so ideally the, the thickest uh, chain is going to be right here, the thinness on the side. So roughly within this design area. So let's go ahead to design our chain. I would like to use the conning corner and snapping into this point one more time. And in fact, I want to snapping into the center. So roughly this is my first chain like this. The conning corner is not the rectangle with the uh, corner it is actually more pillow shape and I really like the shape okay so maybe a little bit smaller that should work better all right so then the second things I wanted to do is creating a cross section now let's go ahead to use the conic corner one more time and I want to snap in right here and to decide how thick my chain is going to be so maybe something like this coming back a little bit so it's a little bit rounded all right, now I need to work on this curve before we actually do the sweep. Let me explain to you why we, I want to do that way. If you go ahead to use the sweep command and you're making this one and this one, and then uh, once you click this, it look okay. But I'm going to quickly just twist it to show you. Uh, if you twist this guy, we're gonna go from maybe here to roughly about here and then you twisting like this and then you may want to move it back a little bit like this that will be fine too but what happened is the thickness they are changing and which i don't like it because it's deform a lot i want it to have a uniform uh, look so the correct way that i like um, or my preferred way, there's really no right or wrong way. I'm going to twist it first. And that's snapping into the quadrant to the quadrant. I want to twist about 90 degree. And then I want to rotate it back for minus 45. And it will get something like this. All right. And we simply just going to snapping this into the quadrant and we're gonna come in into the surface using the sweep one one more time so if you feel sweep this one cross section then you'll get something like this notice that this is a little bit kind of uh, in the angle it's because our cross section was in the angle that's recorded history and that's Look, take a uh, take a look on that now this is your curve 
if you because we rotate that degree there if you have this going this angle then everything will go into the right shape and as you can see this is like pretty tall there so it's too much uh, for a ring so I'm going to simply just want to scale this down so it has that flare of the twisting you also have the high and low but it's not dramatically and so let's take a look on this again we want to do the sweep one this is rail this is the cross section and we'll get something like this all right if you feel like this is not pronounced enough you can always come back and make this one more pronounced and let's do it one more time or record a history that will give you the real time change okay all right so if that's okay let's click okay now we need to have a bunch of them so that's using that one and let's use uh, the uh, linear array we want to go maybe seven of them and i like to go with the odd number because you're gonna have the one right in the middle so let's go ahead to get something close like this okay so now we have all of this take a look if they look nice on the rendering so let's go to the render view and see if they link properly all right all of them need to lock in into each other and bowling union together because we are going to cast into one piece they are actually not movable just have that look so that's using the bowling union to make them into one piece okay now I need to have this back to the center so we're going to use a line tool to align to the vertical center and snapping into somewhere in the middle or we can just snapping into that point all right so now we have this let's take a look how am I gonna go in to make the middle one bigger the size keeping in this size kind of a scale it up so we are going to use the command cage edit and let's go ahead to pick up the piece we want to cage edit and that's uh, using the first one called bounding box in the option and then we want to align to the wall so just right click or enter and then here's the point that we need to have some editing it's much longer here on the X so I'm going to X typing in for maybe 10 point the Y doesn't care that much the Z it doesn't care that much it most likely is the y uh, it is the x and make sure all the degrees are equal three and we'll hit enter then you're going to see a box there uh, if you enter one more time you're going to see all the control point so i'm going to pick up those two row or two column and just do the 1d scale something like this and your shape is going to get a little bit more complicated but that's okay uh, we are going to do one more time this pick up more row and if you want a button to be all the end to be even taper a little bit more we can pick up both of them and scale it down a little bit you can also come into the side view that say you want all of this right here going up a little bit so the middle one not only they get wider they also want to get thicker you can change with cage edit as well it's really good tool to use but be aware, be aware that your computer is going to slow down dramatically uh, if your computer is not running fast enough you're probably going to get some problem there uh, by crashing your computer all right so save all the time now double check on this if you don't like it don't delete this box because you can always turn on the control point and if you like it you can just you know turn it off or they just delete it all right so now I have this one I'm going to trim it somewhere about here and um, just mirror to the other side right there and using those two to trim them off this one and this one okay so now I have it trim it off I just need to cap it so that way this will be solid again come back here check on the closed solid poly surface that's what we're looking for okay so now we have this I actually want them to be above this line right there um, 
If you like the bottom to be completely flat, you can actually move it down a little bit and trim it flat and that will sit it on your rim better, right? So in this case, I'm just going to use the um, align button and just type it zero, all right? But again, you can trim the bottom to make it flatter. Okay, so now we have this, we need to make the, raise, uh, the rest of the shank. I actually would like to flow this back to um, our ring first. First of all, let's know where is our seam on this circle. So if you coming into the curve tool, you have the one is adjust close curve seam. And you click on this one, you're going to see there's a one point right there. I'm going to move that point to the bottom and click enter and it doesn't feel like it's changing anything there but i'm making this to the bottom which means my design will stay on the top okay so that's using the command flow and we want to flow this guy and this is our um, base curve and this is the target curve all right so now it is flowing really nicely to the top of the ring let's take a look on the render view it will look something like this. Okay, now all we need to do is creating the button of the ring shank. So I'm going to, uh, coming into the button and I'm going to make a cross section and simply for something look like this, a subpedo shape again, something like this. All right, and I want to moving that one back to the center now we need to have the cross section so let's go ahead to using the command uh, for duplicate the edges and we want to duplicate both edges here on both sides not that little piece over there okay and let's click ok and join them i'm temporarily going to hide this one so it's easier for you to see what i'm going on now with this one over here we will need to do some adjustment. I'm going to draw a straight line snapping to the midpoint here, midpoint here, and again snapping into somewhere midpoint or the end point. That would be fine. We're gonna do the same thing midpoint here to the midpoint, and again end point to the end point. And let's pick up all the straight line that we draw earlier, and we're simply going to trim it off the one in the middle. So now it's endpoint to the endpoint, and let's go ahead to join them. We're going to use the command to uh, uh, sweep one to creating the bottom of the ring shank. Let's go ahead here, here. Oh, we didn't join this one. Let's go ahead to join this. And if it doesn't join, this means something is wrong that I didn't snapping into the right place. So I'm going to trim this one off and again, join this one. All right, so make sure it's joined. This one too is not joined. So I'm going to explode it, have this one to trim off here and let's join it. Okay, so let's do the bottom of the ring shank for sweep one rail. This is a rail cross, cross, cross section. It says the either open or close curve not both it may happen to you before uh, this is a clo close curve this is actually an open curve so that's exploded this one and let's come back and check on it why this is open so this look fine here and oh this section again I will need to have that one to trim it off this curve and let's go back to join one more time all right, let's see if this time will be successful. Sweep one rail, you got cross section one, two, and three. And I would like to align them into the inside of the ring shank. Right there and right there at the midpoint. This is the midpoint and make sure they are facing the same direction. And let's hit enter and beautiful. All right, so we need to make this one into the solid as well. That's using the command cap and we're gonna call back for what we have there all you need to do is to join it do you like this bold taper cuban chain i organize a playlist for you with a lot of different type of a chain 
check it out and leave in the comment let me know if you liked it thank you for watching thank you for watching i'll see you next